In this video, I would like to show you how to generate forecasts using weighted moving average. Weighted moving average is very similar to simple moving average. Uh, so you can use uh, two time periods, three time periods, four, five, etc. But the difference is for each time period, you need to have a percentage weight assigned. So, for example, if you use two time periods, you need to have two weights associated with each, uh, with both of these time periods. If you use three time periods, each time period should have a uh, certain weight, etc. So, uh, for simplicity, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, two time periods. So, n equals two. And so what that means is that I need to have um, two weights, okay? So I'm going to say um, W1 uh, and W2, weight for one period, weight for the other period. So I'm going to make this, uh, let's say, uh, 0.2. And then uh, weight 2 will be 1 minus that because the weights have to add up to uh, 100% or 1, okay? So if I make weight, uh, weight 1, 30, uh, the other one's going to be 7. If I make weight 1, 50, the other, the other weight will be 50, okay? So for the uh, weighted moving average, um, we're going to use two periods, so we can start at the earliest in period three, okay? So what I'm going to do is, um, from period three, I'm going to go back one period, okay, times the weight associated with one period before, plus I'm going to go back two periods, times uh, weight 2, okay? And then I'm going to click Enter. Now, as I copy this formula below, okay, uh, the uh, periods that are used will also move, okay? But I don't want the weights moving as I copy this formula, okay? So, what I'm going to do is, um, weights are in column H, so I'm going to click between H and 1, and I'm going to put a dollar sign, okay? So, that means I will always look at the first cell of uh, column H. And then here, I'm going to put a... Uh, dollar sign before 2, so H1 and H2 will always be uh, in the first and second rows, okay? So even though the row of the forecast changes, these two rows will not change, okay? So, and I uh, right-click, left-click, and drag, okay? And then here I go, uh, number two, okay. So these are my two, uh, my forecasts. So for example, here, I'm looking at period 10. So I should use period 9 and period 8, okay? I do. So period 10, uh, period 9, okay? And I waited by H1. This is two periods before, and I uh, waited by h2 okay so these are my um, simple moving uh, weighted moving average forecasts and as you see if as i change uh, let's say i make this 20 percent as i change the weights my forecast will change okay so let's add this forecast to our graph okay so i right click i click select data i add 
uh, series name will be n2, y values will be these. Okay? And I click OK. OK. So this is uh, the blue line is the uh, demand, and the red line is my forecast. So as I change my forecast, so for example, if I uh, go from 20% to 30%, you see my forecast is a bit different. Maybe 40%. Again, it's different. Okay, so so you can see how the weights affect the uh, forecast. Okay, so now my question is, what values are best for this type of forecast? Okay, in other words, what values of W1 and W2 um, give me the best forecast quality? Okay. So for that, we're going to calculate uh, the forecast error and then the absolute value of the forecast error and then the square of the forecast error and then absolute percentage error, okay? So uh, to calculate the error, I take the difference between uh, demand and forecast. So I come here, type equal, uh, demand minus forecast. Okay. And then uh, I come to the lower right hand corner and I drag it down all the way up to here. And the average of these will be mean forecast error. Okay. I uh, double click here, so mean forecast error will be equals average parenthesis, okay? So this is my uh, bias measure, okay? So um, let me, uh, okay. so let me uh, put some more space here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, different values of uh, W1, okay? Uh, for example, I'm going to use W1.1, uh, um, I'm sorry, let me write it down here, W1 equals, uh, let's say, 10%, W1 equals 20%, W3 equals 30%, etc. Okay, and what I ask you to do is to continue this all the way up to W1 equals 90%. Okay, so for the illustration purposes, I'm just going to use 10, 20, and 30%, but for your assignment, I want you to calculate everything up to 90%. So we have this uh, mean forecast error, okay? And uh, let me put this at 10%, okay? Now the absolute error will be ABS, parenthesis, error, close parenthesis, enter, okay? And I uh, click and drag here. So this will be mean absolute deviation. So, click, and then uh, I copy this here. Now, uh, this uh, squared error will be error times itself, okay? So, this will be here, and the average will give you mean squared error, okay? And then... Uh, we have uh, absolute percentage error. So absolute error, this parenthesis, divided by uh, the actual demand. Okay. And then I copy this all the way down here. This will give me mean absolute uh, percentage error. Now, 
um, let me copy these two here. Okay, so these are going to be percentages. I select them and click on the percentage. Um, the rest I want to see as uh, a number with two decimal places. Okay, so these three are accuracy measures and this one measures the bias okay so now for uh so i'm just going to say this is bias this is accuracy and these two are also accuracy so when uh w1 equals 10 percent these are the numbers that i have okay uh, right click copy right click paste values one two three okay and then uh, what I can do is I can copy the formats here to here I have different formats but that's fine uh, I select the cells I come to this uh, little brush icon I click on here and I click here okay so I have copied these and then um, so so what happens if I set W equals to 20% so W1 is 20% W2 becomes 80% okay and this is how my bias and accuracy measures change okay I uh, select all of the four right click copy uh, right click paste okay and then uh, I change this to 0.3 okay so again I select these right click copy uh, right click paste okay and then I select these formats brush and then okay so what I see at this point is in terms of accuracy uh, w1 equals 10 percent 20 and 30 percent are very similar in terms of what percent you're off positive or negative on average on average you're off by 11 percent uh, in terms of squared error okay uh, the best uh, the lowest error comes from this w equals 30 okay so I'm going to highlight that in terms of mean absolute deviation again this is the least uh, amount of error okay I'm going to highlight that and here I need to look at bias uh, and in terms of bias you want something as close to zero as possible uh, from these three measures I see that this is the least amount of bias that I have on average okay so um, here I'm kind of split between two values so you, if I want the least amount of bias I select w1 equals 10% but if I want the uh, best accuracy, highest accuracy, I need to select this. But then I will have some more bias. Okay. So I want you to do this for all the values from 10%, 20%, all the way up to 90%. Okay. And then uh, based on your assessment of these numbers, uh, let me know which values. Uh, are the best uh, to use with weighted moving average.